Hello my happy Astro campers and I am back with not necessarily a tutorial this time but this is more uh, an informational video about doing imaging uh, specifically with solar. So what I actually have here is the sun strangely enough and we're going to be looking at 8-bit versus 16-bit in terms of color space. Um, the program I'm using is SharpCap Pro and as you can see in the drop down box here we have two options here for two different settings 8-bit and 16-bit and if you have a color camera you'll have other options such as 24 and so forth and so on. So what I'm going to go in here is these are probably more advanced settings that we're looking at um, specifically we are paying attention to the color space and the type of file format. Now typically when you're using uh, default settings it is actually preset to whatever it determines is the best fit. Now in my particular case I prefer to use SER files uh, purely because they are full uncompressed. Within 8 mono for example you have the option to be able to do uh, AVI files. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to play around with the exposure settings for a second here. What you'll notice here is there is a frame rate that is located down here. Now this tells you how many frames that we can capture depending on your system. Now being selected in 8-bit versus 16-bit we're going to obviously see a big difference. When we're here in 16 the frame rate actually drops down to around about 60 frames per second and we can actually change the performance based upon the exposure time. So if I was to increase it, you can actually see the frames per second drop down quite drastically. So I'm just going to go back and reset this down to um, something that I use quite frequently. If you notice that there is a gain setting here, um, this obviously does not affect the frame rate. So if you feel that your image is a little bit too dark, it's actually better to push the gain up than it is to increase your exposure time. So we're going to take a quick look at the high speed mode here. This is only really applicable for a legacy camera of some description and it doesn't support high speed modes. You can turn these on and off. Um, this does affect the performance. If you have an older camera and you find uh, frames being dropped because basically what happens here is, is your computer itself cannot actually buffer the images faster than it's pulling it down. So you, you kind of have to slow everything down and the easiest way to do that is to simply modify the high speed mode. Um, typically if you have a USB 2 camera you need to set this to be off as opposed to on. If you still have other issues even with a USB 3 camera depending on who makes the actual camera you may have to experiment with this. Typically this results in dropped frames and you can actually see this down in the corner uh, within the brackets. Of course, this particular system is set up to be optimal, so I very, very rarely get dropped frames. Now, one other interesting feature here is if you needed to do some type of analysis on the frame rates, you can actually set the timestamps with the number of frames, and that shows up in the top left hand corner typically. You can actually modify this so it shows up in different places. Um, but typically I keep this off because I don't want a timestamp all over my images because I'm not doing anything specific. Now one of these other parts that we're going to look at here is the pre-processing. Um, you may have noticed that in a previous tutorial that I was messing around with dark frames uh, and flat frames and things like that. In SharpCap you actually have the ability to do uh, dark subtractions and apply flat frames live directly to the video. Uh, I generally don't like to do this because I prefer to do all the calibration frames at the end or afterwards, but if you were doing live astronomy and you wanted people to see a better image, you can go ahead and make your flat frames ahead of time and then simply drop them into here. It actually does a pretty good job in doing the calibration part, but Typically what i found is once I've actually captured the footage with all these calibrations, uh, calibration frames applied, it doesn't tend to look as good as I was you know, expecting it to be. And of course the band suppression does a very, very good job if you tend to get a lot of banding, 
Uh, on the IMX174, there is a bit of banding that can be noticeable, but in this particular case, we are always going to be using calibration frames after the fact, since we are not actually doing some kind of a live astronomy here. So we're going to take a quick in-depth look into 8-bit versus 16-bit when it comes down to processing, specifically on the sun, because I generally feel that shooting in 8-bit and 16-bit when you're doing the solar imaging, there is a huge, huge difference. So let's switch over and I will see you back in just one moment. So I've gone ahead and stacked the raw video files for both 8-bit and 16-bit respectively. And we're going to have a look at the differences between the two. Now I'm working in monochrome for now um, because I kind of feel that it's the best way to actually get a better idea and a better look into how good or bad one particular image is versus the other. Now in order to keep this fair, I've also used the exact same settings when it comes down to processing and doing all the sharpening. Uh, I didn't want to purposely make one over sharp versus the other, otherwise it may seem a little unfair. So right now what we are looking at is the 8-bit version of the surface of the sun. And we actually have a small active region right here, which is actually a sunspot as well. And when we actually look, the first things first is I kind of feel like the image is very, very soft. And the way that the white has blended into the actual edge of the sun, or more commonly known as a limb, doesn't seem to be as not as nice as it would look like normally. And even more evident is the prominence details just seems to be very, very wispy. Of course, this could always be attributed to bad seeing, but both of these videos were shot literally back to back. So now we're going to go over to the 16-bit version. And already there is a huge significant difference here. The prominence details, especially the one in the corner here, is a lot sharper and it, it almost looks like there's more shading to it. And of course, the actual blending looks a lot better as well. And then obviously the active region here is more pronounced. And even some of the detail up in this area here is a lot better than it would have been compared to the 8-bit count counterpart. Uh, you can just about make out this area here is, is the same section. So I'm also going to have a look at the actual original file before it was sharpened. And there's not much discernible difference here other than it does seem slightly sharper for the 16-bit. Now, this is the unprocessed stacked file. Um, the idea behind why I'm trying to show you this is so you can get an idea and an understanding between the two different files. Again, I'm going to make these uh, files available to everybody who is a Patreon subscriber so you guys can download that data and have a go at processing it yourself and then check out the difference between 8-bit and 16-bit. But one major important part that I do want to point out first of all is when working with the 8-bit file, there is actually more data um, hidden inside of all of this. So typically when you're working with an 8-bit file, you're not going to get the color and the dynamic range as you would do compared to a 16-bit file. And I can show that we're going to convert this over to a true 8-bit file. And I'm going to uh, mess around with the HDR toning to see what the major difference is, is going to be. And already I can tell just by looking at this, it's not looking very, very promising. And there's a lot of noise, especially where the blackness of spaces and where all the prominence detail would actually lie, including all the speckles. It just seems very, very muddy, very, very noisy. And, and just simply not very good. So we're going to take a quick look now at the 16-bit version. And you can see there is already way less noise. And if I increase all the detail, we can actually start to make out that the prominence details is obviously a lot better off than the 8-bit counterpart. Now again, there is obviously a, a clear trade-off here because in terms of file sizes, the 8-bit versus the 16-bit file, the sizes is absolutely amazingly different. 
Now, just to give you an idea, we're going to have a look at the original 8-bit file here, which is like 4.6 gigs versus the 16-bit file, which is double the size pretty much at 9 and a bit gigabytes. Uh, so it's quite a big difference here, and it's actually going to be even smaller if I had actually saved all these files in AVI format. In fact, it probably only would have been roughly a gigabyte, if that, for the 2,000 frames that I had actually captured. So hopefully this gives you a good insight in the differences between shooting 16-bit versus 8-bit. And hopefully this will clarify a few things for you. And I look forward to hearing from you guys and seeing some of your work.